There was Facebook, and what made Facebook the next step was that it was very relevant to you. It's keeping in touch with people that you are connected to, your friends you haven't seen for a long time, or your, um, or your relatives that you want to be staying in touch with. Um, what makes Polyvore and Chictopia different is in that we're taking media to the next step. It's an interest-based social media. You're all here. Most of you don't know each other. Some of you know me. Some of you may know Jess. But it's all because we have an interest in fashion. Um, it's all because we want to get engaged in this industry, participate more. It's all because we're genuinely interested, we're very authentic, and all because you want to know each other and maybe you represent a brand, maybe you represent yourself, but you want people to talk about you. So. That's where we think social media is different, and it will be very powerful because um, unlike traditional media where it's a one-way communication, you can turn this into an infinite amount of fans, um, friends on the internet. Um, so we came up with three simple rules for each of these, engagement, authenticity, and brand advocacy, and we're just going to race through them and show you some great examples of brands who are doing this really well, not just on Polyvore and, Face and um, Chictopia, but also on Facebook, Twitter, etc. So the first area is engagement. Um, the first rule is go where the people are. Don't reinvent the wheel. You don't have to create your own special social network when Facebook exists. You don't. You should find out where the, the people you want to reach are already hanging out online, and then go to them. Um, I think a great example of this is Calvin Klein. They're live streaming their um, their fashion show, and they chose to do it on Facebook, which is great because that's where everyone is. Also, Burberry brand uh, just started uploading their photo, uh, their um, 3D videos on YouTube, um, which they know that's one of the biggest distributors of video, and that's also um, participating in social media. And I saw that some of the videos gained as much as 30,000 views, and that definitely justified the return on investment of one person uploading the video. Um, the next rule is to make it really easy to participate. You don't want people to have to jump through a lot of hoops to enter your brand's campaign contest or giveaway. Um, a great example, or a bad example, is this is what I mean by too many hoops, when you have to agree to a really long um, list of terms and conditions or fill out like your blood type and your marital status. Like Nobody wants to do that, so make it really simple. Um, a great example of this it was um, Coach, when we worked with them on, um, uh, they ran a campaign on Polyvore and picked their 15 favorite Polyvore outfits, and they posted them on Facebook. And they made a very simple one-click voting. So you just clicked once. You didn't have to be a fan of theirs. You just clicked, and it would vote. And um, they actually managed to get 23,000 votes in 48 hours because they made it really, really simple. So en engagement rule number three, reward participation. Um, so first, I just wanted to uh, say that Chictopia, actually, a lot of you here are winners of Chictopia 10. Um, we definitely want to, we definitely reward our community. Um, Chic points, if you guys know what I mean. Um, but also, um, Chictopia 10, where we flew, in, we ran a contest and we asked people why they like Chictopia, what they get out of it, and we flew in 10 of our top community members. And I think them being here definitely represent our community, and we are really um, happy to have them there. And uh, just from talking to them last night, um, seems like they're really happy to be here as well. So another example uh, is a campaign run uh, currently by, defin by definition is a uh, boutique based out of, online boutique based out of Dallas. Um, what they understood was that in terms of rewarding people, it's not just all about cash. Um, there are other things that people want uh, from engagement. And one of them is, you know, sort of validity, um, uh, you know, recognition for this matter. So they came up with a campaign called By Definition's It Girl campaign. So besides giving you, uh, giving their users um, gift certificates, they also feature them on their blog. Um, they also want to create a long-term relationship recognizing this person's participation in their brand. Similarly, we worked with Seventeen Magazine so that um, the winner of the campaign they ran on Polyvore would actually get written up in the print version of the magazine. So I think a some, something that a lot of brands miss is that recognition isn't just prizes. It's not just money or a free giveaway. Like f getting, getting a little bit of, of um, like being written up in a blog or being tweeted about, like people, people do really appreciate that when to hear directly from, from brands. So that's, that's something that um, brands shouldn't forget. 
Um, so the next section is authenticity. Our first rule here is be really accessible. Don't be a marketing robot. If you can put a face to a brand, that's great. So there are a few um, Twitter, um, good Twitterers out there that we want to point out. One is Bakia Bags, actually. Um, they uh, started their collaboration, I think, I believe they found us about Chictopia 10 through Twitter. Um, they started engaging us through Twitter, and that's how we started this collaboration. Um, another one is Tori Birch. Um, there's really a face behind it. You can tell, um, basically, you know when she's doing things, where she is, and um, you know what she's doing in terms of making the next big plan for her brand. Um, and that's really putting a face, and social media really just um, exemplifies, it, it magnifies who you are inside. Um, it gives you the platform to have so many people be invisible to who you are, so that you have to be authentic. If you're not, then people can see through lies. Maybe one person won't, but you know, millions of your Twitter followers will. Um, one thing we always ask our brands to do on Polyvore is to send us a photo of them judging the contest, um, the campaigns that we run. So you have, um, that's Vivian Tam, the Mark by Mark Jacobs team, the Tory Birch team, and that's Katy Perry at the bottom, although like, it's, not, it's hard to tell that that's her. <laughs> um, but you know, just seeing that, like seeing them, seeing someone famous, I guess, like Vivian Tam, looking at this creation that you made, that, that means, it means something to the community that someone is paying attention. And it's just a simple thing to do, right, to take a photo and for us to post that. But, but it, it really makes a big difference. It really gives a face to the brand. Um, the other rule for authenticity is be inclusive. Remember that real people wear many brands at once. Most people don't dress head to toe in one brand unless maybe you're going to a fashion show. Um, but we find that a lot of luxury brands in particular are very hesitant to let their brand be mixed with other things, even though that's really how people dress. Um, so we encourage, we encourage brands not to, not to be too restrictive. Um, a really good example of this, which is, I think is pretty exciting, is um, Lancome. They just um, announced that they're sponsoring Michelle Fan. Have you guys heard of Michelle Fan? She's the number one um, beauty and makeup vlogger on YouTube. So she makes videos of herself, you know, doing cool like Lady Gaga makeup or spring makeup. Um, and she's, you know, she's fun and she's very authentic. And you can tell she's doing this in her in her room somewhere. So it feels really real. Um, so Lancome is sponsoring her, but instead of forcing her to use only Lancome products in all her videos, they're making her just do one Lancome video every occasionally. So it doesn't discredit her as like a it, it, she's still a real person who uses multiple brands at once, because everyone does that, right? So I thought that was pretty clever of, of Lancome. Um, on Polyvore, we ran a campaign with Calvin Klein, and they, even though Cal Calvin Klein is a very austere brand, it's, it's, it's great minimalist, but they were very open to um, having people mix and match Calvin Klein content with other brands. So this is one of the, the example outfits that someone created that mixes Calvin Klein with H&M, Alexander Wang, um, Pamela Love, because really that's how people dress. One of the examples of a brand that's uh, inclusive of other brands is uh, James Purse. Um, they ran a contest on us um, when we first launched, actually. And uh, most people, when they think of James Purse, they think that's sort of a, a high-end yuppie brand. Um, and then, obviously, you want if you wear James Purse, maybe you're wearing, you can afford a Marc Jacobs. Uh, maybe you can afford Gucci. But it, as you can see in this case, um, when we when they actually delve into their customer base, they notice that people actually pair James Purse with Forever 21, which is a lot lower price point as well as vintage. Um, so this is a brand that was willing to open itself up to seeing who their customers are and understanding who they are and then therefore can fine tune their product in the future to address their customers' need.